Hello friends, this video on lines and angles part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The topics to be covered are introduction, basic terms and definitions, intersecting and non-intersecting lines, pair of angles, parallel lines and transversal, transversal, lines parallel to same line, Angle sum property of triangle. Let's start our chapter with lines, rays, line segment and angles. What are lines? So we know that uh, a geometrical object that is infinitely long and infinitely thin. We have studied this in the past chapter. Infinitely long, it can be this long, it can be this long and it's very thin so it doesn't have any breadth okay but has length that is line okay so if the same line if you let's suppose fix at one point for example i have fixed this at point one point a and then i extend in the right direction this is ray Is not, or I can even extend if there is a point B, I can even extend in this direction, or I can extend in this direction, this direction. All these are ray. Okay? All these are line. All these are ray. If you fix both the ends, you get line segment. For example, you fix these two ends and you call these at CD, this is line segment. Okay, so here both ends are fixed. So we'll talk about these things in detail. And angles. So if you have two rays coming from the same point, you get angle. That is an angle. I think we studied about these concepts in the previous class. So let's go ahead and understand why do we need lines. So the question that comes to our mind is before we start the chapter, why should we study lines and angles? What is the importance of lines and angles? See, if you want to become an architect, you want to build buildings, roads, you should know lines and angles. If you, if you want to move into the architecture field, lines and angles are must. So if you see, these roads are typically at 90 degree angle. All these are, if you see, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line, this is an angle here, this is an angle here. Right? So if you want to move into this field, lines and angles concept must be clear for you. If you want to move into physics, it is very much required. The whole light concept, the reflection of light, bending of light, transmission of light, everything. To understand all these concepts, you should know lines and angles. If, you, if there is a tower, you want to find the height of the tower. So typically, for that you stand somewhere here and you draw a line, you draw a line and then using trigonometric concept you find the height of the tower. So there also you should know the lines and angles because at the end of the day what you do is you form an angle here and then based on the line length and the angle length you find the height of the tower. Actually you typically find this length and you find this angle and then using some theorems you find this tower height. If you want to be a artist, you want to draw paintings, you would draw, you draw, you should know how to draw lines. Okay? You should know how to draw angles. If you want to become carpenter, if you want to make table, chair, sofas, in that case as well, you need to know the lines. Because each of these we see a line and there's angle, there's angle here, there's angle here. So all these concepts of lines and angles should be. So if you see cycle, if you want to move into automobile engineering, and you want to design things, you want to design cycle, design cars, you need to know the concept of line. For example, if you see in the cycle, there is an angle here, right? The spokes are at a given angle. Okay, and these are all lines. These are all lines. 
So lines and angles typically you'll see everywhere. Everywhere around us you'll see lines and angles. And this is a very important concept. This is basic building block of engineering activities. Okay. So let's learn a few terms and definition before we proceed with the chapter. So as I told you that uh, we'll study about line, ray, line segment. So let's write few terms and definition. Line. See, line, I'll just write a definition for you. Line is a geometrical, the formal definition, object that is straight. So when I say line, I'm, I want, I mean straight line. So this is also a line, but this is a curved line. So straight and infinitely long. It has length, but the length is not defined and infinitely thin. So when I say infinitely thin, I'm not even considering the width or breadth of the line. Okay. For example, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line, because all these lines, if you see, has infinite length, right? Even if you mark some point A, B here, this will be here, there are some points on the lines to denote the line. So these lines you can represent by A, B, R, C, D, R, E, F, G, H. But you see, beyond this point A also it is extending, beyond this point B also it is extending, beyond this point C also it is extending, beyond this point D also it is extending. So, there is no fixed length, infinitely long, infinitely thin. That is the definition of the line. Next comes ray. So, it is line exact, it is line, but it has one end point. So, if you fix one point, for example, you have this point A, fix this point A. Or you have point this C, let's suppose you fix this point C and this you can denote, you can just put some value here P or you can say D. So here AB and CD will be So let's take some other values so that not to confuse because I'm using A and B here. So A dash, B dash and C dash, D dash. Other A. Right. We see one point is fixed. Okay. You see it is not extending beyond A but it is extending beyond B. It is not extending beyond C, but it is extending beyond B dash. So that is ray. The third definition is for line segment. Okay. So line segment, it is nothing but a portion of line. It is not the full line. It is a portion of line which has two endpoints. endpoints. So both the points are fixed. For example, if you talk about this, PQ, both the points are fixed. So the line is not extending beyond P, not extend, neither extending beyond Q. So this, as we denote this as PQ. This is line segment. Okay. So please note when you denote line, line you also denote by L, M and these type of terms are also used to denote line. A, B, C, D, these are also used to not line. For ray, typically we use terms like this. For example, in this case, I will use A dash, B dash with a arrow. Right? Here, I will use C dash, D dash with a arrow. Okay? So, that is the typical representation of a ray. For line segment, we just use, for example, in this case, PQ. So, if you see here, the representation of line and line segment are Sometimes same. Okay, so if this is, let's suppose a line segment, sorry, this is a line AB and this is a line AB, both are different, right? Sorry, this is a line segment AB, this is line AB. Both are represented by AB. So please don't be confused. When you say AB, AB can be a line segment or AB can be a line. But typically, this part you can also represent as L or M or N. A line 
but line segment typically you don't represent by l m because when i'm saying l i'm just saying that it has some length what length i'm not sure correct so this is a line i'm just telling l the end points are not fixed so that is a line but try to understand that when you when this uh, when you have this a b or c d or p q it can be a line it can be a line segment only by looking at the figure you can make out whether it is line segment or line or if it is given then also you can make out so in the question they'll mention line segment ab or line ab so when you say line segment ab you are talking of this when you say line ab you're talking of this so that is about line and line segment there are other terms like collinear points collinear points see collinear points three or more points Three plus points that lie in the same line. See, co means together, linear means same line. All are in the same line. Co means together, co-education. That means school where both boys and girls study together. Co means together, linear is line. Points in the same line. For example. If there is a line, there are points 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All these points are actually collinear points. Right? But if, for example, then similarly to collinear, we have non collinear points. So points which are not collinear or non collinear, for example, these four points, let's say. Are they lying in the same line? No. Right? They are not lying in the same line. You can't draw a line straight line which is touching all these points. So this is non-collinear point. Okay. Then we have angles. I'm just trying to give definition of some basic terms. See angle is formed when two rays originate from same point. Let me write here for you. Angle is formed when Two rays originate from same end point. So there is end point from this there is a ray originating. One more ray originating from the same end point A. So this is a angle. Let me just give some term here B and can just give point C. So the same angle you can actually represent in this fashion also. Right? If the angle is same, let's suppose this is 30 degree. So both are same because I'm not bothered about the length of AB or AC. What I'm bothered about is this angle. And these two AB and AC are called arm. Right? This is called arm. And the end point is called vertex. So we have two new terms here. Arm is AB or AC here. And vertex is point A. Okay, so typical angle. These are arm. This is also arm. And this is called vertex. Okay, so these rays which make angles are called arm, A, B, and A, C, and the point at which these two rays meet is called end point. So that is the definition of the terms which we'll be using in this chapter. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.